By the time you are watching this, the assumption is that Keir Starmer, former head of the Crown Prosecution Service, that's like being an attorney general, career politician, or at least career bureaucrat, a man who appears like Gavin Nuisance, willing to change his opinion according to the currents and climate of the time. Not as a result of personal evolution, not as a result of further input, but because of polling, because of data. The clear question about Keir Starmer is, obviously for anyone at the most basic level, is will Britain under Keir Starmer improve? Can we trust him? Can we rely on him? What kind of leader of the opposition was he? What kind of ally was he to former leaders of the Labour Party? What's his relationship with the deep state? What's his relationship with the truth? Let's have a look at Keir Starmer making a pledge to the people of Liverpool who have always hated the Sun newspaper because the Sun newspaper, after the disaster that was Hillsborough, where 97 people ultimately died as the result of poor police and poor conditions in the ground were condemned and blamed for their own tragic deaths. The Sun ran to print a headline, The Truth, at a front page that condemned, criticised and even sneered at the people of Liverpool. Here we see Keir Starmer telling the people of Liverpool, I would never give an interview to The Sun. He, I think he even touches his heart. After what they did to your city, I never would do that. Well, all you have to do to see if someone's got integrity is watch and wait. So let us, like the people of Liverpool, watch and wait and see what Keir Starmer says and how it matches up with what he ultimately does. This city has been wounded by the media, the sun in this city, a hurt for this city. And I certainly won't be giving any interviews to the sun during the course of this campaign. Yeah, see, that's worked. I've said a thing. People like that. Good. Good on me. I'm playing this crowd. Hang on a minute. Oh, I'm brilliant. Look at me go. Yeah, this is me. I am delighted to have the support and the backing of the Sun. I think that shows just how much this is a changed Labour Party back in the service of working people. It certainly does. What it shows you is that the Labour Party ultimately, like all political parties, has to form relationships with the media, with corporate globalists that have business interests in a variety of territories that they are able to cross-reference and cross-pollinate in order to create favourable conditions, primarily, I assume, economically, but that might play out in ways that I can't even begin to speculate on. But what I will tell you is that that story was breaking on Sky News that's ultimately owned, at least for a significant part of its history, was ultimately owned and considerably influenced by Rupert Murdoch and News International. And the newspaper that they're talking about, the Sun newspaper, is owned by Rupert Murdoch and News International. And these instruments are used to create the kind of consensus among what you might call working class people or blue collar people to ensure that they're shepherded and herded in the general direction when it comes to general elections that is suitable for very powerful interests. Maybe it's not so pronounced in our country as it is in yours, but we are governed by elites. Maybe our elites were monarchistic, oligarchical, aristocratic, and yours have been billionaire and globalist and corporatist. And the truth is, I simply don't know enough to say. But what I do know is that democracy in its current form is a type of tyranny with Soma, to use a Huxley-esque piece of language there. We are medicated, we are docile, not as docile as President Joe Biden, but we we are kept, I would say, subdued and distracted, presented with the sort of spectacle of election day. Yeah, we get to vote. We get to vote. And then what? Because now, because history appears to be moving faster just because of the sheer weight of information, we can calculate, catalogue and observe in real time what these people say and what they do. To give you a little more insight, here is once more, if you've not seen it yet, Keir Starmer, prior to becoming leader, pledging his allegiance to Davos, the WEF, globalism over Westminster, the national parliament, which in itself is already once removed from the people, controlled, co-opted and uh, manipulated. Let's just ask you quickly, you have to choose now between Davos or Westminster. Davos. Why? <laughs> because Westminster is too constrained um, and, you know, it's closed and we're not having meaning. Once you get out of Westminster, whether it's Davos or anywhere else, you actually engage with people um, that you can see working with in the future. 
people like Klaus Schwab, real people like Albert Baller. I'm a man of the people, of the billionaire class. Now, a few more things about Keir Starmer, the presumed leader of the United Kingdom. Is he our Macron? Is he our Trudeau? Is he just a reshuffling of Rishi Sunak? You tell me in the comments and the chat. Certainly, when he was leader of the opposition, he had ample opportunity, particularly with his experience as head of the CPS, to make it clear that he was opposed to the incarceration without trial of the now blessedly released Julian Assange. Did he do that? Was that his position? He says he's anti-Sun, then he announces proudly that the Sun are supporting him. What does he do about a real journalist held in jail? Well, let's have a look. The CPS, England and Wales's public prosecutor, has deleted all its record of its former head Keir Starmer's trips to the US, it can be revealed. Starmer served as director of public prosecutions for that period there, 2008 to 2013, during the period where Julian Assange's proposed extradition was being overseen. During his time in the post, the CPS was marred by irregularities surrounding the case of the WikiLeaks founder. The organisation has admitted to destroying key emails related to the Assange case, mostly covering the period when Starmer was in charge. Hmm, that's extremely interesting. Here is um, some information on how Keir Starmer handled a spate of riots that broke out in London about 12 years ago now, which in a way were a response to the kind of nihilism that was beginning to pervade the country in the post-2008 economic environment. It was, of course, ignited by the death of a young black man in police custody. But at the time, I remember feeling that just beneath the surface, there is a powder keg waiting to go off. Here is how Keir Starmer, who was head of the CPS then, the most powerful lawmaker in the land, this is how he handled that period. The penal response to the rioters was enormous and unprecedented in a bid to ramp up the shock and awe of the criminal justice system. Remember, you first heard the phrase shock and awe when? In the Iraq war, when there was an imperial attack on Iraq based on the lies of WMDs, uh, which was ultimately a colonial war rebooted and repackaged, which created more terrorism. Well, Keir Starmer wanted to create shock and awe in the justice system in order to shut down an uprising, what could grow into an uprising, because if you're going to change the world and it's not going to be by the ballot box, and it won't be by the ballot box because the ballot box prohibits that one way or another, right guys, then it's going to be by public disobedience and public action. Obviously I'm not suggesting violent action, but I think disobedience and mass movements and grassroots movements are obviously going to be required to create meaningful change. We can't continue to bring you this beautiful content without the support of our partners. Hey, this is exciting. We've got a great partner today. It's Rumble. But beyond Rumble, it's Rumble's latest venture. Let me ask you first, are you a Sleepy Joe type character with zero cognitive performance, struggling to muster focus and brain power for basic things like running the United States of America? You've got to stop drinking woke liberal coffee that hates you and your way of life and start your day by drinking Rumble's very very own 1775 coffee this is going to be the best tasting coffee you've ever had seriously good ethically sourced from a family farm in the high altitude mountains of Bolivia. Not in the Bolivian lowlands run not by a family, but by a single man still living with a pet. No! Instead of waking up and drinking your big corporation-owned woke ideology coffee that's probably making you sick from the pesticides it's sprayed with, try it. Rumbles 1775 revolutionary coffee. Support freedom of speech. Build a parallel economy that actually values you and loves you. My favourite? It's dark, of course. I've always found the lure of the dark irresistible. I'm sorry, how can I stay mad at you? You're just going to have to wait over there for a little while. Level up your morning routine with a 1775 coffee. Sleep all night knowing your hard-earned dollary dues are going towards supporting freedom-loving creators like me on Rumble. Visit 1775coffee.com now. Pick up your first bag. Use the code BRAND to save 10% on your first order. Oh, come on. Why choose, you know? Now, whenever you see something like that, whether it's, you know, wow, we'll do pick your poison. The January 6th insurrection stroke protest, the Black Lives Matter protest, all in all, whichever side you're on, and I know whoever you are watching this, you'll think that one of those sides was wrong, right? You have to acknowledge that riots and public disturbances don't happen unless people are unhappy and disturbed. And the great trick that the establishment is able to do is make us oppose one of those arguments. If we were able to go... 
I support both of those groups in that I believe that the establishment should be overthrown and that new institutions that are truly representative of the people should be created. Now, the riots in London and across the UK were no different. And because of that, they were responded to with incredible authoritarianism. How do you tally that with the kind of wokeism that Keir Starmer pays lip service to? Because the people that were penalised under the, the instantaneous legislation were young black people in significant numbers. The Crown Prosecution Service, led at that time by Keir Starmer, immediately relaxed the threshold used to determine whether or not to press charges. Long-standing advice that suspects under the age of 18 should not be tried for minor offences was suspended, so, you know, they got rid of that. Oh, these people are children. Uh -uh. Actions normally regarded as theft were treated as burglary so as to ensure maximum jail time. They tweaked the conditions. They tweaked the laws. They tweaked what was the understanding of, oh, well, for this type of crime, the age is 16. For this one, it's 18. For this one, it's 20. They changed it to make it as punitive as possible. Cases were pushed from the magistrates to the Crown Courts, ensuring that longer sentences were available and costing minors their right to anonymity in the press. So they shamed people, huh? Existing sentencing guidelines were abandoned and despite criticisms that he was playing politics, Starmer ordered the courts to stay open 24-7. Like Walmart, like Asda, supermarket justice, round the clock. Now, I mention this because this is now the leader of the United Kingdom, presumably by now. What is it that he says in public? I would never talk to the sun. What is it he does in public? We are allies with the sun. Just watch. We can see, can't we? We'll be able to watch over real time how this plays out. We'll be able to see how ordinary people's interests are served. We'll be able to see whether it's a divisive administration that tries to find ways to smear and shut down dissenters to control any opposition, whether that's in the media or politically, whether the alliances appear to be to increasing war. Every suggestion so far is that Keir Starmer will continue to fund this war, perhaps even send in British troops, perhaps even supporting ludicrous ideas like conscription. We'll see, won't we? We'll see. We'll be able to watch that play out. Certainly, it's likely that we're seeing a rise in populism as a response to this kind of authoritarianism. One indication of the rise of a globalist movement is that a figure like Nigel Farage can now go on Jordan Peterson's podcast. Doubtless, he'll soon have a conversation with Tucker Carlson. So while the central authoritarian establishment controls certain media spaces, there are a plethora of alternatives that are actually more powerful now emerging. They cannot control the narrative anymore. That's what terrifies them more than anything else. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to see more uncensored content where free speech can flourish, join our live stream. Click the link right here to watch the next video if you want to, or become a member of a growing movement. Download the Rumble app and you'll be informed every time we make a new piece of content. Stay free.